Welcome to Alexandria, planning of the city. Alexander's plan to build his great city began with a verse from Homer's Odyssey. There is, in front of Egypt, in the sea with many swells, an island called Pharos. Guided by these clues, Alexander the Great founded his future city at the western end of the Nile Delta. Though Alexander considered this location ideal for his great city, it presented considerable challenges. Too difficult to access during storms, the surrounding swamps threatened disease, and the limestone soil prevented the growth of healthy crops. However, due to the influence of his mentor Aristotle, Alexander the Great recognized that the true value was its strategic emplacement. Alexander knew that in controlling Pelusium to the east, Memphis to the south, and his crowning glory Alexandria to the west, he would create a triangular stronghold, allowing him to control the entire delta while giving him access to the Mediterranean. The great walls of Alexandria had a humble beginning. Lacking chalk to outline the future city's foundations, architects were forced to use flour instead. Clouds of migrating birds swept down and ate the flour, erasing the plans. This prompted Alexander to seek guidance from the oracles, who reassured him that his future city was destined to feed a large population. Excavations led by Mahmoud Bey El Falaki in the 19th century revealed that the wall enclosure measured approximately 5.2 kilometers in length and 2.2 kilometers in width. It was roughly 9 meters in height. These formidable ancient walls would resist a number of attacks, including fending off the king of Syria in 169 BCE. It wasn't until 295 CE that they eventually fell to Roman Emperor Diocletian, and this only after eight months of relentless assault. Alexandria's principal architect, Dinocrates, chose a Hippodamian grid plan. The grid maximized functionality with wide straight roads and canals running beneath them. Alexander recognized the military value of the city's design. The wide parallel streets gave him optimal surveillance of the city while allowing the unobstructed flow of troops. A central corridor ran from the Mediterranean's north port down to Lake Mariotis to the south. This thoroughfare acted as an unobstructed link for commercial trade and travel between the two ports. Many of the streets 
were bordered with grand buildings and parks, including Canopic Street, with its impressive gate bordering the eastern end. Alexandria was most likely built upon an already existing Egyptian village. Upon its completion, the Egyptians reviled the city, refusing to call it by its founder's name. Instead, they called it Raqqed, the building, as a mark of disdain, which was later Hellenized into Rakotis. Despite this, the name Alexandria would remain. Thank <laughs> you. 